Hello everyone, Dashboard Introduction. In this video, we're going to take a look at the dashboard and all the visibility that it can offer to us while managing our Palo Alto firewall. It provides general information about your firewall, such as the management IP, the software version on the firewall that is currently running, if it had performed recent updates, and user activity. So your administrators, if you have multiple administrators under your staff that are managing your Palo Alto or your firewall environment, from the dashboard, you're going to see that login activity and also if any configuration changes were performed. So it's very powerful and we're going to go on to all those details in this video. Our topics for this video are going to be, number one, we're going to customize the dashboard experience. So when you log in onto your Palo Alto, you're going to see a couple of widgets that are set by default. So maybe you don't need them. You can actually remove them and you can tweak and move and customize that dashboard to whatever your preference is. So we're gonna go through that. We're also gonna look at how login activity per user looks like from the dashboard. And also we're gonna understand how to interpret those system log events. So that's very important for you to understand. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the widgets. We have some cool options that you can add and you know to keep customizing that dashboard so those will be the main topics that we're going to be discussing in this video so let's go ahead and get started once you log in onto your palo alto you're going to be presented with the dashboard and as i mentioned the dashboard is very customizable for example if you don't want to take a look at your data logs from the dashboard you can just simply click here and remove that if you would like to have the config logs presented right in the middle we're just gonna click this and move around so you can rearrange your objects and like I said you can customize this to whatever your needs are say for example you want to make sure that the login admin activity is presented on your far left corner we just move this and we're set so again it's very very customizable and easy to work with let's go ahead and uh, let's see how that user login activity looks like in real time I'm going to create two admin accounts. I'm just going to go real quick into the device administrators. I'm going to click add admin one as the name. Just set a default password for now. I'm going to make sure that he's a super user. I'm going to click OK. Let's add another one admin two. On your Palo Alto, every time that you do a change, you got to commit. You make sure that you remember that because. It's not going to take effect. Every time that you make a change, you have to commit those changes. So let's click on commit. And once we finish, we're going to use one of those admin accounts. We're going to log in onto the firewall and we're going to make a change. And then we're going to take a look at how the dashboard shows us that login information. So the changes are committed. Let's go ahead and uh, go real quick. Let's click log out. Let's go ahead and use that admin account. Okay, I'm logging in as that new admin. Once I'm on the dashboard, I should be able to see a login session being recorded on the logs. And once you log in as a new user, you're gonna be presented with that, do you know, welcome screen. And sure enough, now I have the new admin account presented onto the dashboard as a logged in timestamp. Let's go ahead and create an address object and we're gonna call it dashboard test and this will be a summit address to a slash 24 on 10 10 0 0 uh, click OK and remember what we have to do in order to make it apply and to make it effective let's go ahead and click commit commit once more so now I'm gonna show you what that log admin has just performed from a configuration standpoint by taking a look at the config log click back onto the dashboard and sure enough, so if you take a look here on your config logs, then you know what? We now know that we can move this around. So let's go ahead and put it on the left side and let's take a look at that real quick. So as the default admin account, I just created admin one, I created admin two, and guess what? This admin one that I just created, created an address object into the default virtual system, which is virtual system one, and I will be covering what virtual systems are on a separate video. Here it goes. My dashboard dash test address object. It was created 
around this time. Then after that, admin one just perform a commit action, which basically sets the configuration active onto the firewall. Pretty cool, huh? So that gives you an idea of how flexible it's the dashboard and when it comes to taking a look at the monitoring activity on your firewall. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at the widgets. The widgets are actually very cool. And I haven't told you, everyone that is watching this video, I'm actually running a cluster, Active Active Palo Alto cluster here. And there's a cool widget that allows you to see that cluster status in real time. So once you are on the dashboard, click widgets, system, and then you have the high availability widget. Let's go ahead and click that. And now we're going to know that we have an active, active, highly available cluster already working on this Palo Alto setup. And just for convenience, I have Palo Alto 2. So this is Palo Alto 1, which is my active primary cluster member and uh, PA2 as my standby. So how do I know that this guy is my standby? Again, widgets, system, high availability, and here we are, active secondary. So you see the dashboard, it's uh, very powerful. And uh, you wanna play with your own Palo Alto and make sure that you understand this because this is gonna be your best friend every time that you need to troubleshoot a firewall issue. So right now, as I mentioned, I have a highly available active cluster and I can see that between my two Palo Altos, I have a synchronized running config. All my next generation firewall features are matching the version across the two units. So everything is showing here as green. Same with my HA ports. And, and we're gonna have a separate video talking just of how HA works and we're gonna set this from the ground up. So don't worry guys. We're gonna touch this on a separate video. So we're gonna know that all those HA ports are up and running. Um, and, and then we want to take a look at what will happen if I were to restart one of my Palo Alto members. So let's go ahead and do a restart of PAL2, which is this one. And in order for you to do a restart, you got to click device, operations under setup, reboot device, and we're going to hit yes. And right now we're just rebooting PAL2. I'm going to go back onto PA01, and we should be able to see that it has lost communication with PA02. So let's go ahead and wait a couple of seconds. And there you go. Right now, my cluster of two Palo Altos, the second unit, because I just invoked a restart on PA01 uh, in the dashboard, I can see that the second unit has lost communication onto the cluster. If we take a look at the system logs and we refresh, Sure enough, we can see that um, the HA connectivity just went down. Uh, so again, a very powerful tool when it, when it comes to troubleshooting. So you wanna make sure that you become very familiar with it. Finally, we're gonna take a look at very beneficial widget, which is the interfaces. So if we go onto, again, widgets, systems, interfaces, in this widget, I'm gonna be able to see in real time what's the status of your physical interfaces on your Palo Alto, and again, if your Palo Alto is hosted at a remote data center, how do you know that the interfaces are actually up or not? This is the way to do it. You add a widget. Again, we went on two widgets, system, and then we select interfaces. And you're going to be able to tell that if any interface for some reason went down, you're going to see this in red. Gray means that it's basically disabled or it's currently down. So you're going to know that the PA you know, has an issue on a specific interface by just adding the widget onto your dashboard. Alrighty, so there you have it. We went into the dashboard and we saw how to customize the dashboard, how to move your widgets around, how to add widgets, how will system log events will look like, and finally how to rearrange things on the dashboard so it looks uh, the way you want it to. So that basically in a nutshell uh, gives you a good detail of how the dashboard interaction to the user is going to be. In our next video, we're going to take a look at console-based administration.